This is the Iowa caucus update 48 hours later. So, yeah. So they got everything For, figured out, I heard. You totally. No? <laughs> well, speaking of predictions, right? You were talking about predictions earlier, Daniel. Um, I made the prediction this morning when we were figuring out the rundown mm -hmm. uh, for the show that something else was going to come out of Iowa. Like, I was, I was certain of it. Coronavirus. The coronavirus. <laughs> oh. Um, I, was, I was certain of it. And so I was like, you know what? I, I'm just going to do this little thing as a placeholder. You know, let's, let's, there's going to be something that comes out of Iowa. So first of all, they are 86% uh, percent reporting now, 48 hours later. I, I remember like Monday night being... It was like 10 o'clock and I was bitching then about how the results weren't in yet. Oh man, little did I know. So uh, with 86% 86, 86 reporting, uh, Pete Buttigieg is an eyelash uh, in, in, in first place uh, with 26.7% and Bernie Sanders at 25.4%. They both have 11 delegates. So um, that's great. And then Elizabeth Warren's the only other one with delegates with five delegates and 18.3%. So that is the latest on the actual numbers. Yeah. So we have yet to get, um, what is that, 14% uh, percent more of the vote. And then I was actually on my way here listening to the news. I was listening to TYT. Okay. And they reported that Black Hawk County Bernie delegates had been switched from Bernie to Deval Patrick interesting and and then switched back again after the supervising official there basically outed them saying actually there was nobody here for deval patrick there's no way for them to actually have delegates uh, shocking so this is kind of the latest and that it, you know i was on i was on the cta train i just took scribbled down some notes while i was listening to this but um supposedly there are other accounts of this happening yeah. so i mean i'm certain even if you guys look it up right now as we're talking there might be reports of what's going on with these little delegate swaps you know yeah. and then of course we've all heard already that you know the creators of the apps are coincidentally related to the Buttigieg campaign crazy you know so there's there's all of these these all of these factors it's like the Epstein effect right all of these factors that make me really scratch my head and think huh I don't know if I actually believe the narrative that is coming at us out of the mainstream media right now, which is, oh, the app messed up, and now, you know, we need to do this, like, hand count of the initial cards. Um, you know, I'm a personal trainer, so I can only count to 15. So, but you can <laughs> actually just start over, <laughs> right? <laughs> so what do you guys think about about these the, these new findings and these new reports? Okay, I mean, shocked. So, so here's the thing. First of all, Deval Patrick, who are you and why are you relevant in this race? I'm sorry. Who are but you I mean, and where's... Wait, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> but, but I mean, it's, 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 I it's, 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 it's madness to know that somehow Bernie Sanders delegates went to somebody who's, who's further behind in Biden. Look, Amy and Klobuchar, uh, Amy, Amy Klobuchar and Joe Biden have zero delegates. They are far behind. Like, they are at the bottom. All the other candidates, too, for either the Iowa caucus at zero at the bottom. The only three people who are relevant is Sanders, Warren, and Buttigieg. All right. And right now, right now, we still need to find out what really happened because, again, thankfully, Bernie Sanders' campaign had their own independent app that was working that was much more viable. And more importantly, they had enough lawyers to really hold this system accountable because the DNC just can't get away with what they did before. So... Again, we're still waiting, probably, maybe, hopefully, tomorrow, we'll get the full story and things will be cleared out then. But Buttigieg declaring himself a winner, no, that's not true at all. The very fact that this whole thing was disorganized from the beginning should raise alarms. We all need to be aware about this. But also, also, this just goes to show you how incompetent the DNC establishment is and why we need to have a political revolution, why we need to get involved in this election cycle, and why our voices matter, and why we got to elect these frauds out of office.
Daniel. So this is like, are, is anyone really surprised that the DNC was like, we're going to shift a percentage or two? Because that's really, again, it's very similar in Chicago. It's a very similar story. It was like to say, if you're a progressive running in Chicago to get 51% of the vote, you have to get 55% of the vote. Very similar situation mm. here. They're going to, the Democratic Party won't like, oh, you had 90% and they had 10%. Whoop, now you have 10. They're not going to do that. They're, gonna, they're more along the lines of, oh, it's, you know, 52 to 48. I mean, 50, 50. Okay, now we got to flip. That's more of the line that they're usually doing. So here it's, oh, this little district. Oh, it's not Bernie. It's Deval Patrick. So one thing that is very good on this is Sanders' team was prepared for this. They came in with lawyers. They came in with their own app that, I don't know, actually seemed to work pretty effectively and got a good count. So this other part of this is this also gives the Sanders team a whole lot of precedent and public support if they say, hey, this uh, future primary does not seem to be run legitimately. This is actually a bit of a gift for the Sanders campaign in terms of public perception. Because mm -hmm. I've talked to a lot of people that are usually, like they've talked like, hey, in any other election, I w like Iowa, for example, they would go, oh, they just screwed up. It wasn't malicious. But this year... They're like, oh, this seems like malicious act. So the fact is that Sanders is in a very good spot to publicly call this out and then have people like us, people like you, other people that support you know, fair elections to amplify that message and get something done. Because right now, people are not on the DNC side. People are on Bernie's side. And I want to give another example of this that we showed that this happens in Elizabeth Warren's campaign, CNN, working together to try and attack Sanders with a sexist attack. Everyone literally said, I believe Bernie Sanders more than I believe CNN and Elizabeth Warren. So Sanders has the authenticity, the honesty. So he's in a spot. And again, I'm not saying he's going to win every battle along this entire process, but he's in a spot to win many of them. He has the backing. He has the ability to sue. He has the lawyers. He has the infrastructure to do his own monitoring of the election like we saw in Iowa. So... If this, if stuff like this, keep, we keep seeing it happen, and Sanders' team says, "Hey, we want a recount. Hey, we want a revote. We have all these irregularities we're pointing out. They have a much higher chance of getting them. And right now, even if we say it's not malicious in Iowa, even if we said that everyone just is some of the most incompetent people, and they have no idea how to count and have no education, and they hired people that did not know how to count to run all this, it still shows that Sanders and us." can work together to overcome. And again, it's not going to happen in every case, but it's happening in this case. So we have to be vigilant, but we also have to also believe that the Sanders camp is going to lead the way on this. Because in a lot of ways, they're the only way, they're the only people that can lead so others can follow. Yep. And so we have to be aggressive. We have to be unapologetic and never back down. Kira. Yeah, that's all I really have to say about it. Let's just keep our eyes on these primaries um, and have all of the campaigns, not just the Sanders campaign, be really vigilant about watch, watching what's going on because it's not only important to the front runner, it's important to our democracy as a whole. If we can't trust our elections, there's no point in going out to vote. And m m that's generally how I think that's Americans will start. Yeah. Yeah. To think about it, and yeah, and that, that's, that's the point. People need to step up and get involved. We need people to turn out in even greater numbers, not less numbers. Turn out and get ready to fight. It's not going to be an easy fight, but we can win this. There's the DNC, more of us. The DNC is nothing but a paper tiger surrounded by a paper wall.